Hi all, welcome to top 10 ECGs discussion. So let's start. So first we have this ECG. As you can see over here, P rate is there, QRS complex is there, ST segment is there. So, and the rate of the heart is also, as we can see the number of the boxes between two RR waves are 1, 2 and here half, half, so 3. That's 300 divided by 3, so close to 100. That means it has to be normal sinus rhythm. Now let's see over here. So we have P, Q, R, S and T over here. And the number of the boxes, big boxes between two RR waves. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 300 divided by 10. So the heart rate is close to 30. So this has to be sinus bradycardia, right? Now third ECG, as we can see over here, there is at some point crowding of the QRS complexes where there is no crowding over here. So this has to be sinus arrhythmia. Next ECG is this, as we can see over here. The patient has, first of all, let's see, is it sinus rhythm or not? So we can see over here, there are few P waves. Yes, there are few P waves, QRS complexes. Then again, P wave is there. Right? QRS complexes are there. Then I guess P wave is there. And QRS complexes, P wave is there. QRS complexes, the P wave is there. QRS complexes is there. So what is this? This is typically a first degree hard block. As we can see, there is a huge distance between P and QRS. So normally, PR interval is 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 seconds. But here, it is more than that. Let's see. So first of all, 1, 2, 3 small boxes, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So normally, there should be at least 3 to 5 boxes. But here, more than 5 boxes, that is 6 boxes are there. So these are first degree hard block, which can conservatively be also managed. So the next is, as we can see over here, P, Q, R, S is constant. This has to be sinus. But there is some problem over here. As we can see over here, P, Q, R, S is there, P, Q, R, S, the distance between P and Q, R, S, that is PR interval is gradually getting prolonged, right? Here, you can see the three boxes here, there are four to five boxes, and here again, five, four to six boxes, here also seven boxes, and after this some time, there is no, there is P wave, but Q, R, S is not followed by that. So, this has to be your second degree hard block, particularly Mobitz 1, that's called as Wenkeback phenomena. Then we have this ECG, as we can see over here, PR interval is quite short. Here also PR interval is short and this is actually a constant. But at some point, after P waves, QRS is not getting formed. So this is your Mobitz type 2 heart block. And in this patient, there is a definite indication you should either do a temporary pacing or permanent pacing. Now let's see the next ECG. Now in this ECG, as we can see over here, there is a P wave, QRS complexes. There, there is P wave, QRS complexes. So the distance is not very constant. Here there is a P wave. Here there is a P wave, QRS is there, here is P wave, QRS is there. Again, here is a P wave, here is a P wave, here is a P wave, and here is a QRS complexes. So what does that say to us? That P waves are more than a number than the QRS complexes. So it means that P and QRS are not in relation to each other. So this has to be AB dissociation. And very important example, based on the heart rate of the patient, as you can see, it's 300 divided by number of almost 10 boxes. So this has to be your complete heart block. Again, it's an emergency. We should do pacing as early as possible. Now, we have this ECG. As we can see, the heart rate is fast rate. So, 300 divided by number of boxes. So, it's 150. And as we can see over here, P wave is there, QRS is there, and P wave is there. Again, P wave is there, QRS is there, P is there. So, this has to be sinus tachycardia. Now, after this, we have this ECG. As we can see over here, let's see the heart rate first. So, 300 divided by almost one box. So the heart rate is close to 300. Now, let's see. Can we get P wave over here? As we can see over here, let's see the rate 2. P wave are not actually seen. Okay, P waves are not actually seen. It's embedded in between the QRS complexes. So this has to be your supraventricular tachycardia. Now here, if patient is stable, that means it's just walking around telling that I'm serving palpitation. You should do Weigel manner first and adenosine. And if patient is unstable, the definitely short has to be given. Now we have one more ECG. As we can see over here, the heart is close to 100, right? 300 divided by 1, 2, 3. That's 100. Now, if you see over here, let's see this QRS, right? There's slightly obscured QRS complex. So, this is again one more type of the supraventricular tachycardia, particularly AB re-entrant tachycardia, also called as AVRT. And classic example for this is WPW syndrome. And you know it occurs because of the accessory pathway. So, the definitive treatment is accessory pathway ablation. All right. Next is this interesting supraventricular tachycardia. Now, as we can see over here, this P wave are quite soft to click P waves, right? We can see this soft to P waves. Also, if you notice carefully, one, two, three P waves are there, and then there is one QRS complex. So, this is classically known as three is to one atrial flutter. Now, let's see what's next. Okay, now this is all of your favorite. As we can see over here, there are no discernible P waves, right? P waves should be like this. 
but here there is no discernible PVS. Also, RR is not regular, right? Here we can see there are almost two boxes. Here is one box, here is one box. Okay, here again it's two box, one, three box. So that means that RR is irregular. So this has to be a tree fibrillation. We will discuss treatment later. But now let's see what are the rest is used. All right, next is this important. As we can see over here, there is a broad curious complex tachycardia, right? Heart rate is close to 300. Now, the important duty for this is ventricular tachycardia. And patient definitely has most of the time the history of the ischemic heart disease. As we saw in case of supraventricular tachycardia, QRS goes narrow like this, right? QRS is narrow in supraventricular tachycardia. But in ventricular tachycardia, the QRS is broad. Now, let's see the next ECG. As we can see over here, again, there is a single focus. It's called as monomorphic ventricular tachycardia. Because the morphology of the QRS is same in all of this. But now when we go to this we can see the morphology of jet virus is different for all. So, this has to be your polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. It is also called as TOSA de pointe and it's typically seen in patients of hypocalcemia. That's it. Now, finally, CG, as we can see, this is a chaotic rhythm of the heart, just like a fibrillating muscles. So, this is your ventricular fibrillation and prognosis is really bad in these cases. That's all about this important video of top ECGs. Please share this with your friends and follow me for more such content.